Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Larry's Pin Case Chat, Larry's Live Chat. Any way you want to look at it, call it, see it. Number 52, though. Live chat, though, for the real side. And for those that are new subscribers, welcome. Welcome. And I'm glad to have you on board. Thank you for joining the group. And to all the other subscribers, greetings, and thank you for all your support. Today, let's talk about some cool things and some serious things. Hello to Reese and Frank and Kara. Hello, Rick and Kara. And Kara. David. And hello, hello, David. Hello, everybody. Peace, love, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to get into a, a serious kind of mode here for just a minute. It's about having your pins fixed by complete strangers. Uh, that happened to me once. I I chose somebody from a fountain pen group I was in, and I won't mention any names. And uh looked like uh, the uh, fellow was uh, an honest guy. Uh, he was, he'd been in the group for a long time, and everybody respected him, and well-known, and we can do all this and that, and I have a vanishing point with the 14K nib, really a, one of my favorites, and I accidentally dropped it at Starbucks, and it, when you know, it hit on the nib, and it bent the nib up, so I wasn't sure if it could be fixed, and I got a hold of this guy, and uh, he said, send me pictures, so I did, and uh, he said, well, I, I can fix it, and uh, I said, well, how much? And he said, 40 bucks. I said, okay. He said, but also trade. He said, what do you have to trade? And I said, trade on that. This was a few years back. I said, uh, maybe some inks, uh, some pens, uh, et cetera. He said, uh, you have any Mont Blanc inks? I did. So I said, how about one of your Mont Blanc inks and uh, your uh, Coffin Duograph 1.1 nib? And that was like almost brand new so I said mm, all right so I sent him the pit and everything and uh he should have it back to me in three weeks well three weeks led into a month led into two months led into three months led into four months all this time and I have all the text messages and the conversation that we had still I have it for proof so what I'm saying is the God's truth. I'm not just saying it. So uh, every time I asked him, you know, where's my pen? He said, well, uh, he's been busy, but he's getting to it. And uh, it's on his workbench and I'm getting to it today and it'll be out tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Then he went to, uh, well, I'm going to the uh, store to uh, drop it off, mail it to you. Well, a week later, nothing. So he said, well, I don't understand. He said, I'll go back and check. I said, you know what? Just uh, let me have the, the name of the store, and uh, I'm, I'll call and check. And he said, well, uh, no. He said, I'll do that. And I said, okay. I said, oh, what's the tracking number so I can track it? Because I haven't got it yet. And he said he would give me a tracking number. And he said, well, uh, they don't do tracking numbers. Hmm? What? I said, well. Uh, sir, uh, you're always going to get a tracking number uh, when you tell them. Be sure to tell them you you know you want it insured and tracked because you know I insure my pins and even when somebody wins pins, I always have them track you know tracking number sent. So long story short, this went on till the new year, and uh, I, I told him I said, look. Send me everything I sent you back, and I'll find somebody to take care of it. He said, uh, Larry, I'm, I'm so sorry. He said, I've been in the hospital. Uh, I had to have my leg amputated. Huh? I said, I'm sorry to hear that, man. And, uh, and he said, well, I'm okay now. So, you know, it, it just wasn't flying right. It was excuses and stories and stall stalling. So... Finally, I said, I want my pen back or I'm going to call the police where you live and 
I'm going to start an investigation in the story. Well, he said he apologized, but he was out with some friends late last night, and he was headed to the store uh, to mail the pen. There's all kinds of stories that went on. But to make it short, uh, finally, he did send it back. And when I went to write with it, what did he do to it? Nothing. So I looked up Dan Smith. Uh, he's well-known, well-respected guy. And so I contacted him. So Dan said, send me some pictures. He said, yeah, Larry, I, I, I can straighten that out. Uh, I do the best I can, but he said pretty sure that he was going to be able to fix it. So I went ahead and sent him the pen. And Dan was really good. You know, he, he worked with me all the way. He sent me some pictures. He kept me posted. Let me know what's going on. So he, he sent it back. And then he always follows up to see was I satisfied with the repair work. Um, and I was. Then there was a OK. Problem solved. 40 bucks, well worth the money. But it took me almost six months to get this pen back and later in this pin group this guy had to step down he had started getting a lot of complaints a lot of accusations that he was ripping people off hello to david l and sharon and pete hello guys how you doing uh david wants to know is it possible to enter your giveaway without facebook you know what i've had a lot of questions asked on that uh well the, the, I'll get to that in a minute, Dave. Don't go away. And then there's another question. Uh, do we know why they are called fountain pens? Okay. I'll get to some of those in a minute. So, in a minute, I get to they go ink. But anyway, no, I'm uh, Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Uh, long story short, when you send your pens for repair, make sure you know the person or know about them or get somebody else. Uh, opinion that may know the person. Uh, there's a whole bunch of respectable uh, pen p people out there that fix pens uh, for whatever problems you may run into. Uh, the Nim Monsters are quite a few of them. So uh, Dan Smith is one of them. And there's another one, uh, Indians, is it Indian Indian Pins? Independence. I think something like that. That's another one. Uh, but th there's several. Just be careful, and I'm saying this to the new people and to the old people. Uh, if you have somebody that you know and somebody asks you, re always recommend who you know that you're comfortable with. So I, I thought I uh, said David that. David is curious, was this, the, was this the moderator of a Facebook group? Hey, Dave. I'll do that. You, you got me? Maybe we could talk more about that on a private, but yeah, but I think we're on the same page. So anyway, I, you know, this has been on my mind to share this with y'all, and uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of new newbies in fountain pen uh, world. So I I thought I'd share this with y'all because it's really important because nobody wants to get ripped off, and 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 this uh, pilot, you know, was a one they don't make anymore. So, and it had the 14K nib, and I love the nib on it. So, it was special. But, you know, all my pins are special. Okay, so enough of that. So, uh, uh, I've got a fountain pen. A fountain pen is different than a ballpoint pen or a gel pen. A fountain pen is you fill up with ink takes a bottle of ink or an ink cartridge that you insert in the pen. So uh, a fountain pen uses less pressure than a ballpoint pen. A ballpoint pen, you have to bear down on the pen a lot of times to get the flow going. Uh, the Back to the fountain pen, that ink goes into the ink converter it goes down to uh, the feed and into the nib. So you don't need a whole lot of pressure when you 
use a fountain pen, so that's why they call it a fountain pen. Fountain pen. Fill it with your favorite inks or your cartridge. Or, in this case, you can even use it as an eyedropper depending on the pen. If that all makes sense to anybody. So. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. I'm waiting for my purple uh, monsters to get here. Yay! They're beauties. I got three, Michelle. Two 149s and one 750. I had to do it. You know, so. Um. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Uchi, huh? Hello, hello. Um, th uh, this pen, let's go back to this pen for a minute. I want to say a very special thank you to Bill Manning. Uh, he's a pen pal, but he's also a subscriber and a friend of mine. Really a nice guy. Uh, you know, Bill has supported me from day one when I started in my journey with fountain pens. Totally new at it. And I never, ever dreamed it would be as it is today. But the reason why I'm here is not because me. It's because of you guys, all the subscribers out there. Really. it's you, I've been trying to tell you over and over again. It's not the mighty, superb reviewer. It's you guys that make the reviewer who he or she is. If you understand where I'm coming from, without the reviewers, the reviewer is just there. So, and we have a lot of great reviewers. Yes, we do. And I've been getting some emails off and on about reviewers. Some of my viewers have mentioned that some of the reviewers are snobby. Uh, and uh, don't answer their questions or they avoid the question. So, you know, yeah, I guess you're going to run into uh, that problem. Uh, but, you know, every, you know, they're, they're people. So we're all different types of human beings we're going to run into. So maybe y'all just didn't click, you know. Frank said uh, that looks like a desk pen. Yeah, it, it, it is more of a desk pen, and I'll be doing a review on it. And would you like to share the ink, Mr. Announcer? Uh, the gold, I'll give you a hint. Oh, Rob the uh, Antiqua Gold. By who? I don't remember. Robert. Oster. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to get Mr. Announcer more involved here. And I've got two of them. Speaking of inks, here's the Robert Oster, the gold Antiqua, and the Soda Pop. You know, yeah, I love Robert's stuff. He really has some amazing inks. Really, you know, from Australia, just really amazing inks. Also, uh, some new inks I'm into is the Mr. Announcer. The uh, Krishna Moonview and yes. the Volcano Jungle. Yes, the Jungle Volcano. That's it. I love those inks. I bought the... Uh, uh, some from the pen thing store. I'm waiting for those to come in. I got one bottle of each, plus a bottle of the Noodler's Apache Sunset. David L. asks, do you like tranquility? Yes, uh, I do have a small vial of tranquility left, and I got to order another one. So, uh, and uh, I, I do, uh, I'm waiting for the pen chalet to get their order uh, of the Krishna inks in because uh, I'm going to order. Well, I, I've got to order. I emailed uh, them and uh, so I'm waiting for a reply back. So, Mr. Odell, I've, I've emailed him personally to find out about it. And so I'm waiting for the inks to come in. And as soon as they do, I'll get some ordered. Let's go back to the pin thing store. Brian Freelander. I've talked about him on many occasions. And he doesn't pay me to, to talk about his pen store. Nobody does. I do it on my own. Why is that? Uh, hi, Brian. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Would you like to share what Brian said? Uh, when he was born, roller points were not in use. Oh, okay. So, um, I, I do it to let people know who's out there 
uh, and uh, give people options, uh, information. But uh, Brian is is a new pin store older, uh, owner. He has a little boutique shop in the store. Uh, and uh, the way to get a hold of him, and it's on my videos, you can email him or call him. Uh, and uh, he can get your order if he has it. Uh, he doesn't carry a full line of stock because he's not that big enough. And you have to buy so much uh, of a product. And for him to spend, let's say, $500 to get so many pens or so many inks, well, first of all, that's a lot of money just opening up and then to have the space to, to keep it. And then how fast will it move? Uh, and Christmas time, Holiday times are the busiest for him. That's good. It's times, you know, summer times, spring times, times like right now where it's slow. But uh, I like to spread my love with all of the pin companies. Uh, pin Thing is one of them. Also, on uh, Pin Chalet, yeah, Ghost Bond Pins, I made a mistake, is the one that I'm waiting for the ink order to come in. So Pin Chalet, and that's Ron Manning uh, there. Uh, I've been telling Ron I I'm going to buy something, da-da-da. Well, I finally did this year. And what did I buy? Well, I did it. I broke down and I've ordered the Aurora Optima Flex. And it should be in next week sometime. Whew. Yep. Uh, it, the, it's a blue pen. I think it's a darker pen. And that's not re really grabbed my attention. It, you know, this uh, pen BBS, this one here, it's really a beautiful blue finish. Look at that. The Aurora is nice, but it's not that impressive to me, but what was impressive was the nib, so that's why I got it. And who knows, maybe when I receive it and hold it in my hand, it might look better, because sometimes you can't tell by pictures. So that's coming in, so, uh, and I've done uh, some other ordering from uh, Pinchalay. I ordered the uh, Pilot Vanishing Point, love the pen. Uh, and that's going to be in a Star Wars presentation that Mr. Announcer and I are putting together. It's going to be kind of cool, I think. Uh, I, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's going to have the best I can do. I'm figuring out how I'm going to lay the setting down for it and how I'm going to put the pins in uh, to display them. And uh, it's going to hopefully have the uh, out in space there, the uh, the Death Star and then uh, uh, I think the minions are going to be in mine. So it's going to be kind of cool. So keep an eye for that. Um, what else is going on? Uh, oh, my pin carry for right now is I am using on loan from Bill Manning. Thank you, Bill. The pin BBS 267. And this has a fine nib. And uh, it's... Uh, ink converter, or you can use cartridges, or even eyedropper. Yes, Mr. Announcer. Anything? Okay. So, uh, and I'll give a review on that uh, probably next week. I filled the pin up twice, and I'm using the Robert Oster, uh, the gold Antiqua ink in it. Uh, and so that's one of them. And then I'm using the Pelican M800. And then one of my new beads, which I really love as well. Omos, baby, rocks. The 360. Beautiful pin. Yes, I'm so honored and lucky to have this pin. I love the pin. Truly, truly love the pin. And then here is my Star Wars pin. Love this pin as well. And I am... Carrying, this is a fantastic fountain pen. Jim Hines custom pen, the beacon. This is one heck of a writing instrument. 
uh, and you can find these pins on Jim's website. So, and this is going to be a giveaway as well. But uh, not yet. It's coming up soon. Reese likes the Bainu pins, and David says he's glad to have that Sailor Pro gear. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Dave. I love my Omos. And then here is the uh, Pilot Para. I never thought I would care for this pen, but one of my viewers from Australia, Norm Morris, I believe, thank you, Norm, from Australia, sent me this pen. You know, it's a small pen, but when you post it, it's perfect. It's a medium nib, but uh, this pen really writes amazing. You know, I, I really love the pen. A great fountain pen by Pilot, if you can see the name on it still. And I'll be doing a review on that. So those are my pens that I'm carrying right now. And uh, I really enjoy them. And uh, here's how I, I do my thing with pens. But before I get into that, uh, let me read you something interesting real quick that Bill sent me in one of his letters. I'll let Mr. Announcer read this, give him something to do. Bye. Uh, as Brad, Brad Dowdy once said, my favorite pen is the one I am using at the time. Now, that's good. Yeah. I don't think you can put it any better than that. Uh, Therese, Cubby is napping somewhere. He just had lunch. Yes. Hi, sweetie. Yes. Here's how I do mine. On my journal, uh, I here's how I do my journal. I log in the, the day, the month, the year, the temperature, like this morning was 67, cloudy. And then the pen, the nip size, and what ink I'm using, and the time. So this is, for you journal people out there, this is how I do mine. And I also track my pens and do it the same way. If you can see that okay. Is it not blurry? Is that okay? Can you see it? Is it okay? So. So I keep track of the pens I use. Hello to Matthew. Hey, Matthew. That helps me track the pens I'm using and that I'm not using so I can use them, right? And then the same thing goes into my Hobonichi. I use this at my bullet journal. And uh, this is for, let's just say, March. I think this goes starts at the... The fifth starts tomorrow. I'm filling that out to get ready. And uh, I also have one page in here that uh, I, I, I can do journaling for one day in here. So I put special things that has happened on that day. So that's how I do my thing. Cool? Cool. Dig it? Dig it. Right. So. Hello to Brendan. Hey, Brendan. He likes your bow tie. Thank you, thank you. I'm the bow tie guy with the glasses, different glasses. Yeah, this is my thing. I, I love bow ties. Yep. Um, so the reviews coming up uh, will be the Omos uh, Pin BBS 267, Pilot Prayer will be coming up, and the Vanishing Point, Star Wars, will be coming up. Uh, I will be having some live uh, videoing on the uh, Jim Hines Beacon. I'm using a, a fella that uh, is new into fountain pens. And uh, I'll let him give his feelings, input about how the pen feels and writes. So, I'll be doing that tomorrow, I believe. Should have done it today, but I didn't have the time. So, tomorrow. 
on the giveaways, somebody asked me about the American Graffiti. Yes, uh, that's another giveaway. I'm waiting for Jim to send me those pins back. Uh, so there was another thing I was going to put in here. Somebody asked, well, not somebody, but yes, somebody and other people have asked about the giveaway. Well, let me try to put this where it doesn't make anybody angry or upset. Okay, I have the YouTube channel. I have my Facebook fountain pin group, and I have my Facebook pin group. Pin group. Pal. Pals, I'm sorry. Pin pal group. So, I keep them separate. I do giveaways if you're in my YouTube. If you're in YouTube, you're automatically in when you, you enter the contest. When I'm in my Facebook uh, giveaway, I only do a Facebook giveaway to there. And same for the pen pals. Sometimes I do it like I'm doing now. If you're in Facebook and you're in YouTube, I'll be doing the giveaway. Just But you have to be in both groups. And same with the pen pal. You have to be in either the, just at one time, just a pen pal or the pen pal, or it could be YouTube or pen pal and Facebook. I do them different. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you have to be in it. But uh, uh, what's going to be happening on the Facebook giveaway, I mean, I'm sorry, on the YouTube giveaway that's going to be coming up is going to be this pen. Hello to Ricardo. Hey, Ricardo. This pen. And uh, this will be just for YouTube people. And then when the American Graffiti comes up, you're going to have to be in the YouTube and the Facebook, I'm thinking. Or I may just open it up to everybody. Facebook, YouTube, and the pen pal. That's how I may do it. Uh, as long as you're a member in one of those, you can enter. So that's how I think I'm doing it for the American Graffiti. But I, I, I try to give each group that option, if that makes any sense how I'm doing it. So, on we go. Um, uh, I am waiting for... The pin thing store, hopefully I'll get it next week. I, I've turned my order in for that store for the uh, Jungle Volcano and the Moon View. And for the Noodlers Sunset Apache. So hopefully I'll get that next week. And like I just finished saying, I'm waiting for the uh, Ghost Spot pins to get their orders in for the Krishna Inks. And uh, I've got a couple of bottles of ink that I promised a friend of mine that uh, he'll be getting a couple of bottles. So, back to pins. Um, I've had some questions asked about the Sailor pins. Do I own any? Yeah, I do. Uh, I have the Sailor King of Pins. A great fountain pen. A beautiful, right, super duper well. Love it. And if you own a Sailor King of Pens, you know why they call it King of Pens. Um, I have the uh, Sailor uh, Standard 1911. I think that's large I have. And I had the Pro Gear, but David and I made a trade and we're both happy. And that uh, 1911 large, it's just as sweet, David. And you know what I'm talking about, right, Dave? Ah, I want to share with you all something. I just hit me. Okay, yes, I love Van Scotti fountain pens. I love them a lot. And uh, I have the uh, steel nibs and the palladium nibs. I have the Rembrandt. I have the, uh, the Van Goghs. And I had to sell a lot to buy me some pens last year. And they got stolen, long story short. So... I've been looking and wanting to get 
some of the Vance Cotti uh, vintage, the uh, 14K gold nibs. And I did. That's why I'm broke. I, I got the Vance Cotti uh, translucent, uh, uh, was it a brown or gold? But it looks like, I'm told, uh, pea soup looks green, but it looks, it's pretty. It looks, it reminds me of this gold ink from Robert Oyster Antiqua. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's just a good looking pen to me, and it's got the 14K on nib. And then I got the, that is the Vance Gotti Opera. That's the one I, I got. David says, congratulations on the pea soup. Thank you, Dave. I know you enjoy it. And then I got the Van Scotty Van Gogh 14K. So here's the the Aurora Optima coming in and two of the Van Scotties coming in. And I'm broke. How's that? Well, how did I get the money? Well, saving, selling, saving, selling. So I did it. Uh, and I also went for my, you know, gin house to get here. Uh, and I ordered uh, a PNBBS, oh, what was it, a three-something, I forgot. But it's a light blue with dark blue swirls in it. I'm waiting for that to come in. Um, Hello to Costas, who asks, where do you sell your pens? Here. You just email me and... Uh, we can negotiate a price. My pins are very well taken care of. I like to say they're just about immaculate. And I think David on here will vouch for that. Uh, they come in the pin case. I save my pin cases. Uh, so uh, all the pins that I sold, was it last year? Yeah. Uh, Everybody was pleased and happy. They're, like I said, well taken care of. I baby my pens. And there are some pens I've only used two or three times. Because I like to rotate my pens. And I did find a, was it one or two pens that I forgot I even had. So, anyway. Uh, David has no issues with the sailor that he traded for. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Because, you know, I I want the people that I buy or trade and my friends, Dave, to be really happy with the pen. Like I am with David's pen with that Omos. It's only a ink uh, cartridge, but it's a cool Omos ink cartridge. One I've never seen. And... Uh, I think that video will be out today, won't it, Mr. Announcer? Yes. Yeah, well, we did the video a few days ago, and it's the story. You need to listen to the story behind the Omos fountain pens. Uh, it's incredible how, how they used to make the pens, the process, how long it took. And it's really sad to see such a historic fountain pen company and empire no longer with us. As the Delta pins, they are no longer with us. Uh, and now I tend to wonder about the Aurora pins because, you know, they did lower the price now, which is good. Uh, so hopefully they'll be around. Uh, so from time to time, some of these giant pin makers cease to exist and that's sad Omos puts out one hell of a pen to create their pens their nibs in in house stay tuned when that uh, review comes out listen to the story I hope it's not boring but it's it's a lot about what goes on with Omos creating their fountain pens it's Incredible. Oh, I forgot to mention my other pin carry. So, here it is in my pocket. Can you tell what that is? 
who'll be the first one. And I've been carrying this pen since February the 9th with the same ink in it. Who is the lucky person that will identify that pen? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mont Blanc. Yeah. Yes, but yes, yes, Dave. Yes, 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 Dave. Yes, yes to everybody. Yes, yes. Here it is. Yes, 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 Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Yes, yes. I truly love this pen. Haven't put it down. I share the love. I did hear from a friend of mine that he was in Dallas and there's a, a small Mont Blanc store out there. He went in there and he said they were kind of snobby and, and to him and uh, my buddy's in the oil and gas business. So uh, he kind of laughed. If you knew my friend, you would know that uh, He's able to buy Mont Blanc, but he's not a snob. He's just a regular Joe like you and me. So he went in there and uh, asked him about seeing a Mont Blanc. And, uh, well, when he went in there, here's how he was dressed. Yeah, you want to buy something? <laughs> he goes, well, I don't know. And then the salesperson said, that the Mont Blancs were going to be going up in price in a couple of months. And he said, well, thank you for sharing that, but right now I was interested in looking at some of your pens. And the salesman replied, well, what do you want to see? So my buddy said, uh, you know, I'll come back later and left. Fakir wants to see if you can... Um write something with that pen real quick. He wants to see how it writes. Oh, sure, sure. I can do that right now. Uh, I'll go back. And we'll do this. I think you can see it here. Can maybe a little up more for you? Uh, can they see that? No, uh, uh, can y'all see it? Back more. Take it back a little. Right there. Okay, here we go. I can even go like this. Or like. This over. It has a medium 18K oblique nib. that just a super pen okay and what ink do you have in that one i have the mont blanc beetles psychedelic purple okay beautiful ink beautiful pen i'm totally pleased love the pen great it's a heavy pen but it's my style of pen i love weight in a pen i like girth i like big pens it's just a dynamite colossal pen and I'm a Beetle fan so it all fit in I hope the writing sample helped so uh, anyway yeah Mont Blancs are expensive and uh, it just depends on the individual what you're thinking there's a lot of Mont Blanc haters they don't understand Mont Blancs why they're so high uh, well there's a lot of pens that are up in price. I love the Beatles and I love the pen. And they have two that are out. This was the less expensive one. The other one's a little over two grand. So I'm glad I bought it. I'm going to give it some love and then I'll give it a little rest and get another Mont Blanc out. I got five now. So will I get any more? It just depends what they come out with. Uh, you know, that catches my eye and that how long it takes for me to save or what will I 
sell to, to get it. Uh, but there, there's so many pins out there, you know, that we love. And I guess you can only have so many. I don't know. So, uh, uh, fuck here wants to know what's your opinion on the Wing Sung 3008? On the 3008. Let me see if I even have it. I know I've done reviews on many of them. And I'm trying to see if I still have that pen. Or was it a loner? Uh, well, let's just put it this way. So I won't tie everybody up. Uh, every Wing Kong pen that I have tried tested now this is 698 but uh every one that I've used have all performed very well I've had no issues with any of them except for the and what you be the one you're asking about Where's the number to this beast? Does this ring a bell anybody for this wing song? Right here. Well, I cannot see the number on it. I've done a review on this one before. It's the large wing song pin. Oh, here it is. The 590. Here it is. Sorry about that, folks. But yeah, this is the only one so far that I've done a review on that I really didn't like. They had to send another one. These are two of them. So, uh, because they just, uh, it wouldn't write no matter what I did. So they sent me another one, and uh, that wasn't really any good. But I did get this one to writing some. And so that one is the only one I've had problems with. Let's talk about the Needler's Bay State Blue. What's going on with that? Uh, oh, and Ricardo wanted to know if you were going to have a giveaway for the Beatles pen. Oh, you know it. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. The, I can tell you the winner already. Tell them who the winner is, Mr. Announcer. The name is... Me. Uh, you? I don't think so. <laughs> Me. Uh, I am trying to look up some info to share with you. Oh, here it is. Here we go. On the Neutral's Bay State Blue. Here's what I'm doing, folks. Uh, I've got a jar with ink. Noodler's Base Tape Blue, and uh, it has, I think, a couple of nibs in there. And I put that together on February the 4th. Then on February the 21st, I put a nib, a uh, total nib unit, the nib, the feed, the grip, in a small jar of Noodler State Blue, Blue State, to get that. See what happens, you know, because the Bay State Blue, uh, people have sent pictures in and uh, they've left their comments about how dangerous this pen, this ink can be to your pen. But I've never had any problems, the ones I've seen or heard. It's because when my pink runs, my pen runs out of ink, I clean it either right at that time or that day or the next day. So I've never had an issue with it. Uh, to Brian, no, he's not had a haircut. He's got it back in a ponytail. Oh, heavens no, please. Can I see it, Mr. Announcer? Yes, that's better. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 not my hair. No, no. So, 
don't scare me like that. So, anyway, so that's what's happening. So, I figure that uh, end of March or April, I'll do a live video so we can see firsthand how they look, the nibs look, and the nib unit. And then I'll put it back in the jar, and I'm going to leave it another month or two to see what happens up to I think the six months to really start looking at it and then we'll start checking each month to see the effects that that ink is doing to the nibs and the nib unit as well so that's going to be interesting the scientist at work ta-da oh my buddy wants to say hi real quick you want him to say hi, anybody? Yes or no? Dun, 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 dun. I'm waiting for a yes or no. Mr. Minion's waiting. Huh. Is everybody... Yellow. Here we go. That's for David. How's that? Can y'all dig it? Yay! This little fella rocks. That's my buddy. Okay. So, anyway. So... Here we go. So, uh, what else is going to be going on? Uh, paper. Does anybody have anything to say about the Clarifon tank paper? Uh, Pete's looking forward to the review of the Conklin Duraflex. I think we have that coming up the next day or so. Yep. Yep, that's already done. Yep, that's going to be coming up. And I'll talk about that for a, a few thousand seconds. Um, I love it. 60 bucks. It writes well. It looks great. It feels great in my hand. Is it a super flex pen? No. It does flex, though. You can get flex out of it. Nice wet rider. Not overly wet, but darn sure not dry. I love the pen. I'm glad I bought it. And my number was on that 153. I was hesitant to buy it because 60 bucks is a lot of money anyway I look at it. And I'm glad I did. Uh, do I recommend it? Yeah. Uh, is it going to super flex? No. Is it going to flex? Yes. You have to apply some pressure. Yes. Is the dual flex better than the noodler's flex? Uh, that's up to the individual. I love my noodler's pens. So, you know, they flex fine for me. I don't have any problems to issue with the noodler's pens. Uh, I'm a fan of noodler's pens. Always have been. I've barely had no issues with them whatsoever. Uh... And that's it for that. So, yes, on the Duraflex. It rocks, folks. At least for me, it does. Okay, back to the Clairefontaine. Yes. Uh, David says he's never used it, but we'll be buying some soon. David L. Okay. Uh, David, where do you live at? Dun, 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 the reason why I'm asking, David, how is the weather over there? Over here in Texas, it's like hot and cold, cold and hot, raining, pouring down, sun out, then it's raining. So right now, Dave, it's uh, 70 degrees and cloudy outside. So I was just wondering how Indiana is right now. Or do you have any weird weather like Texas does? So, uh, I am... I use religiously my it's pen. Sun, sunny and cold, about 45 degrees. Kara Oberman made this for me. Uh, it's where I put my pins, a little pin cloth that uh, I put down here and I put my pins on so they won't get all scratched up or banged up. And sometimes... I have to wash it, and it holds well. But uh, 
she really makes some neat stuff, Cara does. And she made a, uh, also she made me a, a pin pouch. Yes, pin pouch that I just retired for a while because I've been carrying it. And uh, I've been carrying it for a while and it uh, does protect my pins very securely. Uh, I've had all my uh, higher ends, middle ends, lower ends, all the pins in there. So I can honestly say she did very well making these uh, pinned uh, cases. They're, it's a zipper and you can pull it out. Well, I did a video, right, Mr. Nelson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can check that out. It's really a nice one. So thanks again, Carol. So uh, anything else? Uh, oh, yes, let me, this bag here, I need to bring to your attention. This comes from the Pinthink store. If you're interested, give Brian a call or email him, and uh, he can answer that question. Ah, oh, here's something that slipped my mind. And let me get and talk to you about this. This is the Baron Fig Mastermind Dot Grid Death Pad. This is the Baron Fig Dot Grid Hardcover. And I am the one who reached out to Baron Fig about their products that I've done before. And I'm still waiting to see if I get some other products in because I'm going to do a presentation on Baron Fig. Why Baron Fig? Well, to me, Baron Fig, Baron Fig doesn't get enough love out there. I don't see a whole lot mentioned about Baron Fig like I do with the uh, Hobonichi, Rhodia, Life, Tombow River Paper, Claire Fontaine. Uh, what is that other one? Uh, Kokuyo. Kokuyo. Uh, and here's a pretty cool one on the Kukuyo paper, yeah, notebook, and the Rhodia dot, I'm sorry, Rhodia. This is the notebook with lines in it. Yeah, I got this at, I believe, Ghost Spot Pins. So, uh, I really do like their products. Why do I like their products? Because really, Baron Fig does a lot of thinking a lot of putting together what the people like. They do it, what would the people, what they need, how they use it. And like they say, tools for thinkers designed with a philosophy of simplicity, usefulness, and community very fine words to express themselves. They want paper quality, notebooks quality, rollerball pens that they put together with stands. They even have messenger bags, tote bags, backpacks that I didn't even wear of. They have uh, different kind of, of uh, notebooks that put together that you can buy starter kits. Uh, some, can some of it be pricey? Uh, it just depends what it is. Uh, I find all their products, in my opinion, in line. I think they're fair. And uh, later, and I've done this before, later I will be doing giveaways through the year. So when do I do a giveaway? It's whenever it hits me when I have time to, to do a giveaway. I don't like to really do giveaways after I show a pin, let's say that's uh, been either given to me or given to me to review for a giveaway. I do that on my own discretion when I'm ready to do it, with the exception of Andrew Weaver's, uh, it was the Cinnamon Swirl. I wasn't going to do the giveaway this early, but 
David was anxious for a giveaway. So for David, and this time only, I will I did that giveaway, which will end on the 8th of this month. That's a Thursday. So uh, you will be hearing more of the Baron Fig. I'm just waiting to see if the other part will come in because... There will be a presentation I'm doing for Baron Fig on my own to show people the benefits of using the Baron Fig, how handy they are, and uh, how the paper is, which I've done reviews on before, and where you can buy the products. And the Pin Thing Store is one of them that uh, sells them that I know of. Uh, and there's other places that sells them, but where I don't know yet until I look into it more. So uh, that's going to be coming up. Um, get that out of the way. So, yeah, I'm glad I remembered that. So that's important stuff coming up. So, you know, for me, I can't speak for any other reviewer, just me. It, it takes time for me to, to think how I want to present do the presentation, or if I'm going to do a presentation out of the ordinary meeting, just say, uh, uh, I'm reviewing today the pin, B pin BBS 267, blah, 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 comes from China, it's this long, that long, how it rides, the kind of, you know, usual. Uh, I like to put a more depth presentation than to make it Energize, make it fun, make it interesting, not boring, but give detail as well about the product. Uh, try to give some history about whatever product I'm doing, not to make it too long cause, or too short, because some people say if it's too long, they hit the fast forward or they just go on to a different review. If it's too short, people complain that not enough was said about the pen. So it's either damned if you do or damned if you don't. So I do the reviews how I think they should go. And I just hope that the people will enjoy them and understand that you really can't do a good thorough review in, in seven minutes. It, it, it really takes a bit longer to do so. Ulysses says, thanks for the reviews. Thank you, sir. But again, I want to thank all of you folks out there, guys, gals, everybody that uh, has a hand in being in the group. Uh, and I really appreciate everybody that joins me on my live pin chat. Uh, that means a whole lot to me uh, because you know, I know you're taking your time out of your day to spend with me as well as me taking the time out of my day to spend it with you guys. Michelle says, don't, you don't need to compare yourself to others. Just do your thing. It's great to have all kinds of reviewers. Yes, that is true. Every reviewer, I think, is unique and has something to share. Because I've had comments, like I said, about reviewers. But we all are different. We all have different likes, dislikes, and we all are different, unique in our own way, our own style. So everybody's got something to share, right? Cool. So uh, what I want to touch base is on the new inks that have come out, the uh, Krishna inks. Has anybody heard of those? Uh, I never have until Brian sent me a uh, couple of samples and I just fell in love with the ink and I, I ordered a couple of bottles like I said so you know let me know if you have and what you think of the the new inks that come out uh, uh, I'm sure there's some other new inks that are coming out and what I heard and I think it was from Brian that there's a lot of new uh, independent small ink makers that are starting to come in the market. 
Uh, where did you get the Krishna inks from? From the Pen Thing store. The Pen Thing store, okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I have done a review and how to get a hold of Brian Fielder. I don't have his card handy. Let me see. Uh, and hello to Farad. Hello. Uh, I don't have the card handy with me. So, or I would. Yes, I do. Here it is. Yeah. Here we go. The pen thing store. Right there. Can you see it, Mr. Announcer? Uh, the can't read the small print. How about now? Hold on, there's a delay for me. Okay, that uh, there's the uh, there it is, Brian. That's that's his email, Brian at the pen thing dot com. And go ahead and get the information while you're at it. Uh, that well, I can't read the phone number. Now, can you read it? Is that too close? Uh, it's it's blurry. Now? Okay. Uh, not 908-852-3460. Okay. So, uh, and I'll read it again. Brian is Freelander 908-852-3460. Pen enthusiast. Or Brian at the pen thing dot com. And if you're in the area, you can drop by and see him at 44 Main Street, Chester, New Jersey, zip code 07930. Quality pens and stationery. And he carries fine writing instruments, leather notebooks, field notes, wax seals, paper, bottle inks, and cartridges. So hopefully that has helped some. And another card I want to share uh, on Jim Hines. Here's his business card. He's up and running now. So you might want to check out Jim Hines. His phone number, area code 214-229-1822. Email is jim at hinespins.com or www.heinzpens.com. And here's the back of the card. Fine writing instruments made by hand using traditional methods. And his address is in Anna, Texas. And today, Sunday, he has a student that he is teaching how to make fountain pens. So, uh, you might want to check out his site because his fountain pens are custom made, each by hand, and they are affordable. You will be surprised and astonished at his prices for a custom made fountain pen. Uh, I think he's got one there. I'm not sure. It's for one nineteen. Is that the Eliminator or something? I forgot the name of it. But look up his site, and you'll see it on there. So, and I know you'll be pleased with his pens. I don't think you will. I know you will because I have the Nebula that I own. Hello to Christy. Hi, Christy. And uh, I do have the Beacon. And that's going to be upcoming soon for a giveaway. So, um, I'm just trying to figure out if it's going to be YouTube only or Facebook group Pacific, or am I going to open it up to everybody, YouTube, Facebook, and the Pen uh, Pal group, which I just might do, give everybody a shot. Last but not least, let's talk about my new group that opened up January 1st, Larry the Pen Bug, Pen Pal group on Facebook. Yes, there are other uh, Pen Pal groups on, on there. And the reason why I opened it is subscribers were bringing that up that they would like me to open one up. So I did. And I think right now I have, what, 25, 29 subscribers? I'm not sure. One of the two. 
So. Uh, to Christy, yes. Uh, there is a Facebook group called Larry's Fountain Pens. Just look for that. You'll find it. Um, I like to think that it's a cool group. Uh, we can share our uh, thoughts and our loves and dislikes, and we can find other pen pal folks on there. I have uh, four that are in different parts of the world that we write to. It's cool. Uh, Sweden, Germany, Australia, the UK somewhere. I think also Spain would be one of them. Hello to Max. Hey, Mac, how's it going? Mac. Max. Max, my moderator, is online. He really has helped me out a lot, and a special thanks to you, Max. Uh, he's the gentleman that makes sure my groups are running fine, that uh, keeps the trolls out. Uh, so again, thank you, Max, for all you have done and helping me, helping me put together the uh, pen pal groups and suggestions that you have done for me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Max. And to the other monitors as well. So again, last time, Jim Hines Custom Pins and the Pen Thing Store. And last but not least, I'll say it again, that uh, the drawing for the Anderson Weaver uh, fountain pen, the, what is it, the Cinnamon Swirl will end this coming Thursday the 8th of March at 8 a.m. And I have nothing to do with the winners. Mr. Announcer will do the generator. I will tell him how many entries I have. And I have not checked this uh, only this morning early. And right now there's 43, but I'm sure there'll be a whole lot more when I have time to check to see, to add to the list. So I will only give them the numbers. I don't look at the names. I look at the numbers and I'll say I have 10, I have 50, I have 100. He puts it in the generator. He'll give me the number. I'll go to my list. I'll look at the name and what number it's with, and then I'll announce it, and that's it. So it's not rigged, it's not a favorite person, it's whoever the name and the number fits is the winner, the winner of the pen. And that's how I do them. We used to do them by drawing, like uh, write the name down, fold them up, put them in a little container or a box and either I would pick it or Mr. Announcer would pick it and that's how we did. But we do think now that the generator is probably the best way to go. Is everybody going to be happy with it? No. Is people going to still think that it's rigged? Yes. Uh, so, but you know, I can't, I can only do so much and this is the best way to do it and uh, I am honest about who is the lucky person. I wish I could put my name in it and win it. Because, you know, yeah, I like that pen. I want that pen. So, Andrew, you can make me a pen and send me a pen if you want to. How's that? Ta-da! I have bought a pen before from Andrew. Yes, I have. And uh, here it is. It's a blue swirl. Beautiful pen. I paid regular price for it. It's a nice pen. And uh, I bought uh, another nib with it. Uh, this one is the 1.5, I think, yeah. This one came with the 1.5 I ordered. Then I ordered a medium nib with it. Uh, Max says, did you see the Goulet trip to Lobby? Yeah, I did. What do you think about that, Max? Yeah. You know, are you a Lobby fan? I like Lobby pens. So, 
I have that new uh, Lombie Vibrant Pink that I do like, um, the All Star. I do have the uh, the ink. Uh, good thing you reminded me, Max. Thank you. I have the purple Lombie and the turquoise, which I do like a lot. Uh, and then I have the vibrant pink from Lamy. Yep, right here. And uh, I don't know. For me, it just didn't seem that I'm going to be putting it in a bigger nib to see if I still feel the same way about it. Uh, so, yes, I do have it. Also, I will be talking about. I've got off. I've got four of them: the Pilot uh, pens, the uh, the 1.5 and 3.8. I have those. I will be showing you guys and uh, let's see I have the I have a couple of more right here the uh, what size the 6.0 millimeter and the 2.4 so there you go I will be reviewing those and showing those. Uh, and yes, we've heard about them for some time now. And I finally broke down and bought four of them. I think I picked those up at Gold Spot Pins. Uh, because here's why. Real quick. I've got a whole bunch of new newbies that have joined. I have them on YouTube. I have them on my Facebook group. And I have a lot of thinkers that are thinking about this pen and newbies that are interested in these pens they've heard a lot about. So I will be talking about those pens at a later date. Okay, hello to Manfred. Uh, David L. loves the parallel pens. David C. is asking, have you seen their interview with Dante Del Vecchio, formerly of Visconti, now with Paniter? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who he's referring to the interview with, though. You know, I know who you're talking about. And so he did leave uh, Vince Scotty, he said. And uh, uh, what pen was it with companies with? The Pen Penider. Penider, yeah. I've heard of the pen. Uh, oh, Goulet pen's interview with Delvecchio. Del Goulet, okay. That's what I was going to ask next. Uh, it was with Goulet, I believe, that uh, with Brian Goulet that he did uh, the interview with. So, yeah, I, I did see that. Yeah. Uh, by the chance that you all see uh, Goulet's uh, uh, video on the uh, the new, is it the new Rembrandt that has come out? Uh, they're a total, they've been, I call it redesigned because they have a different type of colors now, something like the Van Goghs have, and they have a different size nibs. I think they cost like, what is it, 185 something like that. But yeah, I like to get one of those and check them out. I like to check out the nibs uh, on it. Uh, not so much the medium. I have medium nibs. Uh, but check out the uh, different, I think they have a 1.1 and a 1.5. I'm not sure if it's at a 1.3. I have to revisit that to check it out or go to the site and check out the, the sizes of those pins. And Farad asks, how many pins do you have altogether? Okay. Let me see. Uh, this drawer is full. How many do I have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20, 40. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Maybe 75. I'm thinking maybe over 100 pins in these three drawers I have on the side here. And then you have a bunch in the cases also. Yes. And then 
I have this case, which I love these cases. And Mr. Announcer? Uh, that comes from W. Kiffin off of eBay. He makes some spectacular pin cases, and I think they lay pin sales as well. So uh, this is a 24 pin case. That's full. Uh, then I have to have the black one. And he's coming out with a whole new design. I can't wait till he comes out with them. And this is a 24 that has two spots left that uh, they already have their mate that will go in there. So that's full. So that's 48 pins there. And we're not done yet. Uh, here is... Uh, 48 pin case from China that I've stopped buying and that I only get uh, with, with w. Kiffin. Kiffin pin cases now. And that is almost full. And why do I do that? Because, and I'll show you in a minute why. So you probably have close to what, 300? Easy. Easy. Uh, and here's another 48 full and we're not done yet uh stay with me guys don't get bored because i'm doing all this stuff please don't get bored please it'll break my heart you don't want to see me cry do you see a grown man cry so okay then i have the chinese cases the 12 pack and here's what's happening the Bands that hold them in place are ripping. They finally are tearing apart as much as I use it. Uh, so, yeah, they, they weren't expensive at all. They're starting to loosen up and ripping, not working well. So I'm telling myself I might as well get a nice, decent pin case. See how they already, the pin loops, how they're all coming apart. So, and then I have found Rifkin pin case that I really did like. And I think, in my opinion, they're really affordable pin cases. Then on the top of this toolbox, I have new pins in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, eight, nine, 12 pins in the top of the pin case. So that's what's going on with how many pins I have. So, but you know, I don't really have that many. I know there's people out there that have 500 to 1,000 plus pins. So, um, there you have it. That's it. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna retry this uh, Vibrant Lombie ink and with a, maybe a 1.5 and see if I get any, a different feeling on the ink. I do like the pen. It's your regular standard all-star, so that's cool. Cool pen. Okay. So, all right. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. So, I hope I answered the questions enough to get you on track. Um... Uh, or to give you enough information. Um, you know, I, I love these chaps. I love these get-togethers just so we can just hang out and talk. That, that's cool. That's more personal for me, where we can all get to know each other. We can uh, share our, our interests and our comments and our likes and our dislikes, and nobody gets bent out of shape, and Hopefully everybody understands and knows where each and every one of us come from uh, and we respect each other's uh, 
comments uh, and our likes and dislikes because no two, three of us are the same. We're going to have different likes and dislikes and whatever because I know some people really love this ink and that's cool. Uh, and I'm trying to get that same feeling going on. All right. Well, this is to David with the Sailor Pins. I hope you stay in touch, my good friend. That's kind of a private, personal pin thing going on with me and Mr. Dave C. All right, David, hope you're feeling better. Maybe we'll get together next weekend. So I will talk to each and everybody again next Sunday. And I'm going to say this with a reason. Don't text and drive. I have seen many accidents just this past week. Uh, people have gotten hurt from people that were texting while driving. I don't know why they do that, but they not only put their life in jeopardy, but they put other lives in jeopardy. So take care, each and every one. A uh, special shout out there to a buddy of mine, Jason the Squirrel. Peace, Jason. Hope everything is going well in Dakota, buddy. It gets cold up there. Uh, Jason's a real nice guy. I like him a lot. Just super friendly. Does a great job in reviewing. And also, uh, Troy, uh, how do you pronounce that last? LaPlante. LaPlante, yeah. I didn't want to mess up his name. He's a really nice, nice guy. Incredible guy. Does great reviews as well. So, uh, and also, uh, Gold Spot Pins. I believe it's Tom. Uh, he's been doing uh, live uh, reviews on pins, and he does incredible work as well. So check all the reviewers out. Give them a special love. And, uh, hey, take care. You guys mean the world to me. You are the world to me. Last but not least, again, Norman Norm Morse from Australia. Thanks for that Pilot Pereira pin. I, I, I love it. Thank you much. And Bill Manning. Thank you, my friend, really, from the heart. Cool pen. A review will be coming up on it. And I'll get this pen back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peace, love, peace, love, thumbs up. Leave your comments below. See you guys later. Anything from Mr. Announcer? Goodbye, everybody. That's it. He talks a lot, doesn't he? Later, guys.